scoreline showing the Eagles 12-15-87, accounting for Fitzroy 10-4-64. Looking ahead on Tuesday, the 31st of March, Essendon play the Sydney Swans live from VFL Park, and of course you'll be able to catch all that action here exclusively on 7. There was a report to come out of last night's game, that being Fitzroy Ford Mark Scott, and we have just learned the tribunal sat this morning. We have learnt that Scott has been found guilty of a striking charge by the tribunal, but has escaped a suspension because of his good record. So Mark Scott is uh, fit to play in the next game with the Lions. Let's go back again to 1959, because it was then that Colin Campbell was asked to host a segment on World of Sport, and I'm sure, Col, you've got plenty of nostalgia attached to today's program. Well, the same confusion appears to, rem to uh, be here. Now, 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 now. <laughs> don't be like that. <laughs> what did you start doing? When did you start? Well, I gave a golf clinic and uh, Jeff Brook was there. It was Saturday morning. Ron was there, of course. Four of us. One girl did athletics and there was a third, fourth person that I can't remember. But I think it was a cricketer. But it was an hour show then? Yes, it went for an hour. And, uh, of course, it grew and grew and then transferred to Sundays. Be lovely for you today to catch up with some of the old faces that are here, I guess. Oh, well, it's nice to see they're still here. And you followed the program throughout the Every, years? Oh, yes, uh, I suppose uh, I'd see it mm, 20, 30 times a year. And uh, always, of course, for the football because a uh, mad Richmond supporter. Wonder why they're not better than they are, but they will be. Oh, well, perhaps you can spend some time with Tony Jewell as you're giving him a hand. But thanks for being with us today, Cole. It's a pleasure. Oh, hang on. Here's... No, seriously, I'd like to mention yeah, Come in, Louis. Colin Campbell's in our first golf clinic and uh, the show used to always run late, as you know. After Nothing's gone, changed. As, after it'd gone five minutes, the show was an hour beyond time and Casey said at the end, we've got to get Colin over quickly. He never got his seven on out the bag to do the <laughs> clinic, did you, Cole? Well, uh, I think uh, somebody said to me one day, well, you got your hands on the club today. <laughs> <laughs> I was Bill Collins. Uh, Actually, Louis, yes. when that, the show ran for an hour then, because even then you were running late, is that when Case decided, right, we've got to lengthen this program? I don't know about that. I think at that particular stage, Doug Elliott was owning the show and he's selling more ads than he could put into the show, so we extended it two hours because Doug didn't like money at all. You know, knew that. Yes. <laughs> you and he are very alike, aren't you, in many but, ways? Well, a little bit that way. <laughs> we'll take like, a yes. break. <laughs> Stay with us, won't you? After making the Mitsubishi canter not so squeezy, we weren't content to simply rest on our laurels. We designed a better canter with tougher suspension, a bigger payload, and a choice of petrol, direct injection diesel, or gutsy turbo power. We even gave it real big truck styling. The Mitsubishi canter. So superior, it commands respect. Oh, your truck! Hey, what do you do when you're just about to turn over the T-bones at a perfect Sunday afternoon barbecue and the gas runs out? You reach for your bonza barbie, that's what you do. And what do you do when the kids are starving and all the barbecues at the park have lines of people waiting? You reach for your bonza barbie, that's what you do. And what do you do when the cars are absolutely chockers and having planned a family barbecue, either grandma or the barbecue has to go, no, they don't. You reach for the Bonza Barbie. That's what you do. Disposable Bonza Barbies are the best idea under $6. They come with their own matches and coal, burn up to two hours. That's fantastic. And when you've finished your feast, you just douse the flames with the dregs from the wine cast and throw it straight in the bin. It's that easy. New disposable Bonza Barbies for less than $6. I'll tell you one thing. It's a Bonza idea. Have a look at that. Now you clapped you on the commercial. What a major! Ned Alvin, Miss Gill, Tina Turner. Monday night, the multi Grammy Award winning Granny of Rock and Roll. A fresh triumph by the lady who's never played by the rules. The first red hot time on television. in stunning stereo, 9.30 Monday night, Tina Turner, break every rule. After the 1985 Melbourne Cup, Patrick Aloysius Highland came into world of sport as one of the proudest men in racing. Well, he's got a different reason to be proud today. Not only did he ride a winner yesterday at Flemington, his son Matthew rode too. And both Pat and Matthew are our special guests in world of sport, speaking with Keith Hillier and Roy Higgins. Yes, thank you, Peter. In fact, 18 years ago today, Pat Holland was at World of Sport because on the day before he had won the Golden Slipper Stakes in Sydney on Vane, 
and the young fellow on my right, Matthew, was only six months old. Between them yesterday, three winners uh, at Flemington. Uh, Pat, uh, many memories both with your association with the world of sport uh, over those many years. Yes, Keith, I, th I think that um, all of my six children have uh, been in here at one time or another. And uh, wrecked the place at one time or another uh, too. <laughs> yes, they, they probably did. And uh, But, you know, it's quite odd now that Matthew and I can be in here and uh, he can drive me home. Right. <laughs> Matthew, how did you feel about riding 100% uh, more winners than your dad yesterday at Flemington? Oh, well, didn't feel much different, really. Right. Did you have a, did you have a go at him about that? You'd better no, tell him. No, not Still no, not game, Matthew? No, I won't. <laughs> I've got to win a Melbourne Cup first. Right. <laughs> Pat, uh, this, it's going to be uh, a big blow to the younger riders today because one of the things that has been uh, so advantageous to the young riders uh, is being able to sit back and watch replays of races more so than their masters talking to them where you can have them on tape and sit down and say look son this is where you did something wrong or right or whatever yeah. it, uh, it's going to make it uh, pretty hard <coughs> on the young people of today yes i suppose it is roy um i think that watching replays is a very good thing mm. and has been very you know beneficial but um i don't think that you know i think the the hard fact of race riding is getting out there and doing yeah. it um, after all you know I think that the good tough jockeys were the ones before cameras I think we're since cameras have come in <laughs> I, I think it's really caused a <laughs> few problems Pat, a lot of jockeys would learn a lot from watching your ride on Cameronic yesterday let's have a look at that now as we run through it with Roy Pat Holland winning at Flemington on Cameronic a new, uh, new tactic used on Cameronic yesterday by leading Pat Yes, Roy, actually I wasn't supposed to lead, but the uh, horse jumped very well, and uh, I, uh, well, I was left there, so I decided to ride him that way, um, and he's one of those horses, I think he probably likes to be just kitted to a bit. Yeah. I was going to say, you didn't go for the whip, and the horse does have a, a bit of a mind of his own, and he obviously appreciated that way of riding. Yeah, so I think he enjoyed probably bowling along in front, as it's turned out. Well, yeah. let's have a look at this like son. He's Matthew, stormy home on major drive in the last. Matthew, we, we see you there with those uh, infamous bla blue colours with the white bands. You've got a long way back, which is normal for major drive, and a long way home. Yes, Roy. Um, had planned to be a little bit closer on him, but there was a lot more pace on him in the race than what we thought there would be, and he got a lot further back, but he got the line good. Pat, looking at your son there riding that horse out, uh, he he has a bit of that pea highland polish about him, but he probably sits a little bit lower than the saddle than what Dad does. Yes, he does. He's a bit younger than I too, uh, Roy. But uh, <laughs> he bends over his yet. Yeah, um, but I, you know, I think Matthew's showing tremendous desperation, and mm. uh, which I believe is the type of thing that's uh, going to carry him in good Killer step. instinct. It's yeah, important. I think you've got to have it. Yes, you've got to have it. Mm. I, I believe that. Uh, Maturity now is sort of, uh, I think Matthew's next couple of years will be his best. Well, Patrick and uh, Matthew, uh, for your support of the racing segment on World of Sport, uh, we say thank you, and uh, with your careers, we say good luck. And to those of you at home that have supported us too, we say thank you and goodbye. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Roy. And we salute a team of real champions. The boys of World of Sport. Yeah, keep punching, fellas. Back after this. I thought you were very good, Tony. Thank you very much. <laughs>
With its new citrus formula, it lifts off dirt and grime in a flash, leaving your hands sparkling clean. Treat your hands to Lightning Hand Cleaner and you'll notice the difference straight away. Valentine, the natural choice in cheese, presents the Roller Cycling Derby. And it's time for the grand final of the Valentine Roller Cycling Championships today on World of Sport between Alan Dipple on the Red Roller and Chris Wood on the Yellow Roller. Let's have a look at both of the grand finalists. First of all, 30 years of age, Alan Dipple from Oakley, formerly of course from South Africa. He's a salesman, the winner of 13 South African national titles. A string of credits to his name. He's won the last two World of Sport Roller Cycling Championships and if he's successful today, he becomes the first man ever to win three in a row. His best time, one minute point two seconds and he's all out today to break the magical one minute mark. That's Alan Dipple on the red roller. His opponent on the yellow roller, 26 years of age, Chris Wood from Bayswater, an automotive retailer. Four times Australian amateur junior champion, third place in the 87 Australian professional 16 kilometre championship and he's been the surprise packet this year after several years layoff. It's his first year on the roller cycling championships, a brilliant cyclist with a lot of natural talent. Can he overcome the favourite Alan Dipple? We're about to find out. The Valentine Roller Cycling Championship Grand Final coming up after this break. My goodness me, cameras all around me. I don't know where the hell they're from. It must be a few newspapers or something like that. How are you, pal? Well, anyway, it's good to be with you, even with the cameras and the lot, because that's part of show business. And part of our business in World of Sport for many years has been the great firm of Ballantines. Not only with their vintage tasty cheese, which is the best in the business, what are you going to do there? Now get off the set, Louie. I helped you with your commercial. You just keep out of mine. Take him off, would you? Kindly. Okay. The other thing I want to mention is the fact that the first suite that they introduced... Are you coming in here, aren't you? I am coming, but you yeah. do your commercial. ...is entertainment, which is a beauty. You know it all. It's the beautiful finish to a meal. Actually, I want to say thank you to Neil Buckridge, to John North, and the boss, Brian Valentine. They've been great sports. They've come at everything we've suggested to them through the years. The roller cycling, the wood chop. Bless you, Valentine. You've been a great asset to world of sport, which never should go Just off the Just be quiet a minute, Doug. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I think you'll agree that Doug has been a tremendous asset to world of sport. When everyone cracked a corny gag, Doug was first to laugh. And of course, today, this is Doug's last commercial live. He'll be doing tape one, but his last commercial No, live. I'm doing one later. Yeah, but I mean, next week you won't be doing him live. Well, that's fair enough. Fair enough. So, ladies and gentlemen, just a feeling for Uncle Doug. How about a big hand for Doug now and say goodbye to Doug? Because it's been terrific and we love you all down here, Doug. I love you all too, don't worry about that. Now listen, we've got a big bag over there so you can take all your goodies home so you won't be seen. I'll be taking them too, but look at Case over there, God bless him. I suppose he's going to get his spotlight sometime. You know what, he was walking around a moment ago, yeah. Casey, telling blokes to be quiet and he realised he wasn't in charge of the show anymore. <laughs> well, that's Casey, isn't it? Oh, he's beautiful, he's absolutely beautiful. The best interviewer of a sports nature that the show ever had. I and incidentally, radio and television ever had. I think the best interview we've ever had on World of Sport was the day that Ron Casey uh, interviewed the world champion, undefeated world champion, Rocky, Rocky Marciano. Rocky Marciano, yeah. And that'll go down in history, and I think that... Uh, we're not going to give Case a round of applause. You never know, maybe general manager somewhere else, Doug. We might have a job somewhere. Bloody oath. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I've done the ads. Thank you, gentlemen. And as usual, Uncle, when he's told the commercials must run 30, he thinks they mean 30 minutes. Now it's time for the final. Alan Dipple, can he break the magical one-minute barrier or will Chris Wood overcome him? Four laps of the board, the grand final, under the control of Ross Forster. Get ready. And away they go. Now let's see, can Dipple do it? He's straight out of the blocks and already establishes a 20 metre lead. He's got the disc wheels on today, you can see. So he's trying for a fast time and I'll tell you what, Chris Wood is sticking with him. Normally Alan Dipple gets a big break, but he's got about 30 metres after going a lap and he's a very strong cyclist. This 13 time South African champion, a lap and a half gone, he's 40 metres in front. There's Chris Wood, there's Alan Dipple. He's powering away now, 55, 60 metres in front. Chris Wood can't really find the answer and Dipple's going to run away and try and break this magical one minute mark. He's going to win, that's for sure. The only question now is the time. Chris Wood really tiring. Alan Dipple going strongly. One lap to go. The Valentine Roller Cycling Grand Final is going to go to Alan Dipple and the clock ticking over towards the minute mark. 
He's now over a quarter of a lap in front. The former South African getting very tired, but he's still going brilliant time. And with 100 metres left to go, Alan Deppel becomes the first man ever to win three Ballantyne Roller Cycling Championships in a row. A brilliant performance over Chris Wood. What a marvellous cyclist he is. And as I say, Alan Dippel now becomes the first man ever to win three World of Sport Roller Cycling Championships in a row. A fantastic performance. <laughs> and of course, the all important thing is the time. Let's find out just exactly what it was as we go to the presentation area and Sandy Roberts. Well, thank you, Pete. Just Ross. missed out, Sandy. One, one. Oh, oh just good. missed out. Alan, congratulations on a fantastic performance. And, uh, well, the last three years have belonged to one Alan Dipple. What about putting your hands together once again for Alan? Yeah. Amazing performance. And I think uh, the other...